Welcome to the Support Raising Podcast, a ministry of VIA. We are excited to bring you the best leaders and practitioners in these three areas, spiritually healthy, vision-driven, and fully funded. We hope their insight will help you move forward in your partnership development. Today we have with us a friend and a special guest. His name is Ian Shu. He's the founder and CEO of Pray Vine. And if you haven't heard of that, make sure to check that out. It's not Prayer Vine, it's Pray Vine, a ministry that provides mission workers with a free, secure platform for multiplying their prayer support. He is passionate about building strong prayer centered relationships between workers and their ministry partners. We're pleased to have you here. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day, Ian, to give us a bit of your wisdom and knowledge. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah, great. Ian, I'd love you on, uh, and uh, I know we talked about this a little bit, but um, give us like one or two minutes of how this passion developed in you so that our listeners can have a little bit of a backstory about why this is so important to you. Yeah, absolutely. So God called me into this, not because I was like an amazing prayer warrior. It was actually quite the opposite. There were a couple of things that happened in 2012, the first of which is there were missionaries, Bible translators in Asia who my wife and I had supported for years, and they came back to the States on furlough. And my wife's like, oh, we have to see them. We have to see them. And the moment that I saw them at the fellowship hall at our church, I realized, oh, shoot. I had no idea that you had kids. I know so little about what you're doing, and I can't remember the last time I prayed for you. I mean, one of the issues is we weren't getting their newsletters, but I had this deep sense of like missing out. Yes, we had the automatic monthly giving set up, but I could have been so much more invested in what God was doing. Later that same week, we had other friends who are workers in Indonesia who we supported for a long time. They sent an email asking, for, uh, for scholarship. They're going to take these 11th graders to an island set aside for orphans. And these 11th graders were going to love on these orphans for a week. I, I got really excited. I, you know, gave some scholarships so they could send more youth. And the thing is, I started praying. I started praying every day. And it was the most exciting thing in the world. I couldn't wait to find out what God was going to do. I was growing in my understanding of God's love for the world and his love for me. And I had this really crystal clear thought. This should be the normal Christian experience of mission, this deep connection through prayer um, and investment in what God's doing. So that's how God called us into, into this ministry. Yeah, thanks, Ian. That's, um, I mean, I've heard that story before, and um, every time, I, I, I love it. Every time, I don't ever get tired of it. So thanks for sharing that again. Um, and we do. That's exactly what we want. We do want that deep connection and partnership. Well, and what we want to talk about today is a little bit um, around communication. And we're in our Basics of Support Raising podcast uh, in our series there. And this one is on communication. And, um, you know, I think all of us great commission workers, and when we struggle to figure this out, we want to know. It's not like, you know, somehow we're just expected that, that like, when we're born with disability, some are better at it than others. But... But there certainly are a couple ditches you can go in. And uh, let's talk about the first one. Like, let's describe just some of the impacts you see from the lack of healthy communication um, in partnerships with missionaries and their supporters. Yeah, I see kind of three main categories of impact. The first is the impact on the fruitfulness of a ministry mm -hmm. is significant. So if there is no communication, then there is likely to be a lot less prayer support. And prayer, as we know, is the basis for ministry success. Um, not only that, kind of this feeling of isolation. When, when someone on the field is not communicating, the feeling that you're doing it alone is magnified. And that has repercussions for the fruitfulness of the ministry. And finally, in support raising, right? If you're not communicating, you are actually communicating. You're just not communicating what you want to be communicating. What you might be communicating to some people is, oh, they're doing fine. They don't need additional help. You might be communicating, oh, um, there's nothing interesting going on in the ministry. You might be communicating to some people um, that you don't care about them and they're not part of your ministry. And so 
that often leads to a decline in financial support as well. So the first area is fruitfulness and ministry. The second kind of area of impact is just the personal well-being and mental health and spiritual health of the worker on the field. If you're not communicating, you're not receiving support. People don't know how to care for you. And again, um, that makes the work is already so hard as it is. And if you're isolated, then, you know, as a worker, your own mental health and spiritual health are going to suffer. And finally, the third area of impact is a little more subtle, and that is around lost opportunities for your partners to grow in Christ and in their understanding of who God is. So if you're not communicating, they're missing out on an opportunity to understand what God is doing, what God is capable of, what is, what is on his heart. And, um, and so to the extent that one's not communicating, one's, you know, um, supporters are missing out on the opportunity to grow in their own relationship with God. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, as you share, uh, one of the words that came to mind is unintended consequences. I mean, you, it, it just, it kind of goes through all three of those, but you know, that we've all heard that saying that so much of communication is nonverbal, but it's a nonverbal cue. And I mean, not communicating or not communicating well has unintended consequences. And, um, and I really like the part you shared about the opportunity for people to see a vision. That's great. That's really valuable stuff there. You know, and I know you shared some about your vision in the beginning. Um, is there anything else you want to see just as you think about um, partner prayer support and missionaries connecting together? Are there any other, just like, you know, when you kind of write, you know, we will have succeeded if we see this happening. Like um, anything else that kind of that vision end of, of prayer communication? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the the work of mission is the work of the entire body of Christ, right? So we see kind of in Paul's writings how connected and how vital um, his prayer partners and supporters were and how much he depended on them. And I believe that in order to fulfill the Great Commission, it takes the entire body of Christ and in particular in prayer. And so, I mean, my vision would be every single believer praying consistently for a specific missionary on the field somewhere. I, mm. I, I believe that's what it's going to require to fulfill mm. the Great Commission. Yeah. I mean, um, vision can be really subtle yet profound. And, and that engagement of people caring about what's going, caring about the people doing it and God's work. I mean, what that, that's a subtle, simple, profound thing. And I think we all want that. I mean, as missionaries, I want that. I want people to pray for me. So thanks for that. Well, Ian, as you, um, as you think about some of the components, uh, maybe even background beliefs that, um, you know, kind of reside as what, you know, inside of missionaries head, like what we, like in what ways does a missionary's view of their partners impact their communication with those partners? Oh, that's a really good question. So, you know, I, I think the Bible speaks a lot about the impact that beliefs have on, um, yeah, on us and what one believes about the relationship that they have with their supporter makes a big difference. I, I think for many people, there is an unstated belief that, um, their supporters are only or primarily interested in return on investment, ROI, right? And if you believe that what your supporters care most about is, you know, numbers, success, that's going to shape your relationship with your supporters. That's going to shape how you communicate, what you communicate about. And what might tend to happen in that case is maybe you're a little less vulnerable. Maybe, you know, you feel kind of feelings of shame about communicating when, you know, there are dry spells. And let's be clear, the work is hard. It's mm -hmm. common for missionaries to be on the field for many years before they st start seeing fruit. So that's just one example of a belief, right? Another example of an underlying belief is that, um, that my supporters don't care. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly in a culture within the missions world that's newsletter focused, 
when you send a newsletter out, you might see some, you know, open rates, but you're not receiving much response. And it's easy to believe, to start believing that mm -hmm. my supporters don't care about me and, and nothing could be further from the truth. We've, you know, at Prevon, we've done a lot of research with um, supporters of missionaries, asking them what they want to hear about. Mm -hmm. And they care deeply about the missionaries that they support. And so don't let, you know, the lack of reply on, on MailChimp or whatever, you know, make you think that your supporters don't care. Um, those, those are just two examples sure. of different beliefs that may influence how one communicates. Yeah, I, I love, I just love the depth and the value of the thought you've put in to this particular, just this idea and this practice of communication. I mean, I just really appreciate it. Even just the two that you shared. I mean, those are just really valuable things that that we can think as missionary. Those are those are really really helpful things. Um, you know, as we move forward a little bit, if you were to quantify or describe the characteristics of what you would hope for in healthy communication with partners, um, what what would some of those characteristics be for our listeners today? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a few that that are that I think about a lot. The first is timeliness, right? Um, it's really different hearing from a missionary as the spirit is on the move than mm -hmm. afterwards. And I think, you know, it takes a special spiritual muscle or spiritual discipline to recognize when the spirit is starting to move, that's when I need to communicate and invite people into the work. And so I think timeliness, um, and consistency is part of timeliness as well, right? Communicating regularly. Um, another aspect I would say is vulnerability, being honest about the things that are good, the things that are bad, the things that are challenging, the things where God is showing up and like, you know, kicking butt and like claiming victories for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. All being vulnerable and sharing everything that's going on for you and the ministry, I think is really important. And, and I think there's some subtlety there, right? So like, for instance, recently I've been kind of um, walking through some uh, anxiety when it comes to support raising on my own. We were in the middle of having to raise a significant amount of money. And as I've been sharing about my own kind of mental health journey, it's been freeing, not just for me, because I'm receiving care for that, but for my supporters. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten from my supporters saying, hey, Ian, thanks for sharing. I struggle with anxiety around finances too, right? And mm -hmm. I think being vulnerable gives you an opportunity to connect with supporters in a really deep way where we can care for them as well and walk mm -hmm. them through discipleship. And then I'd say the third thing is um, invitational and mobilizing, right? So like an info dump or a bunch of reports is one thing, but to develop a practice where as you communicate, every time you communicate, it's an you see it as an opportunity to invite someone to participate more deeply in what God is doing, either through invitation to pray, you know, thanking them for how they've already invested in prayer or finances. And I, I think kind of there is a mobilization task in every communication as well. And so I, I would say those three things, timeliness slash consistency, vulnerability, being invitational and mobilizing. Those are gold. Um, I mean, those really are valuable things. I was thinking of um, just sometimes as a missionary, when things are hard or there are roadblocks to the vision being wow. accomplished, those are the times that sometimes we can, you know, if we have the wrong belief in our mind, we'll shrink back from sharing. But, you know, Paul says we were thwarted from going there or you know they set out to like and he let those people know like this stuff is is in the way of the gospel going forward and he invited people to participate so i really appreciate you encouraging us to invite people into those things that are blocking and hindering the ministry going forward that's really and, and sometimes it's challenges in our own personal life i know i'm meeting later we can talk about this and just a side note guys i one of the things i really like about ian's uh pray vine system is that you can develop different kinds of groups. And so you certainly can have a group you build on there for the most personal things. And uh, 
yeah, but that that's great stuff. Thanks, Ian. Um, and you know, as we move forward, you know, we we share just kind of some of the characteristics. Um, you know, and this this one is very similar um, as you think about some of the missionaries, or even from some of the research you guys have done. What what would be some of the most compelling or um, the things that partners have said they want to know about from missionaries in their communications? Yeah, so we've asked hundreds of partners of missionaries this question, what is the most valuable information that you want to know about from your mission worker? And consistently, two things rise to the top above everything else. The first is personal prayer requests. That comes above ministry prayer requests. I mean, that, that speaks to the depth to which supporters and ministry partners love um, workers. And But everything else, like, you know, things that oftentimes a lot of missionaries spend a lot of time writing around, like cultural context and like, you know, how God answers prayers, those are much lower. What they want to hear about are prayer requests. And I think that speaks to a desire to truly partner in a deep way. Um, we've also surveyed uh, supporters and missionaries around things like, you know, frequency and length, right? And so um, asking them questions, which do you prefer, a occasional long form, you know, newsletter with a few bullet points at the end or more frequent but short real-time updates on the ministry? And overwhelmingly, they've told us that what they want is short real-time updates that they can read about and then they can pray and act on it immediately. And so th th those are a couple of the research um, findings that stand out. And then the other one is around vulnerability. Um, and we, we've asked them, you know, yeah, again, a different take on what type of information you want. And what they say is they want honest kind of, you know, yeah, on, you know, on, on unguarded, on, you know, masked, like take on what's actually going on. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think um, that probably is a surprise to most of our listeners. I mean, may, maybe I, I might be assuming a lot, but I mean, it's, um, you know, um, I think we probably hear, uh, I'll speak for me, I think of that one person that complained or abused, and that's really, I shouldn't let them speak for everybody else who really wants to hear those things. And that, that's really valuable stuff. Um, yeah. Um, you know, if, um, you have any particular practices that you really like to encourage, I know one of the fun things you do at Pray Vine is you actually spend some time helping each person set up or somebody on your team does their, their Pray Vine account and their partners. Um, and, and you've said some of these things over, so if there's anything you want to add here, but just in terms of practices, um, you know, is there anything that you kind of just want to, you know, reiterate here or even add some new things to um, that sure might be a takeaway. Sure. So I, I think there are like two secret spiritual muscles that uh, are helpful to, to build um, as far as communication and engaging um, and mobilizing prayer partners. And, you know, the first I already talked about a little bit is kind of this recognition of when the spirit is on the move. That's when you need to communicate and engage. The other is just this core recognition that Prayer is so essential. I've gotten to the point in our own ministry, like if I have a major project or something going on, I actually will not start that project until I ask my prayer partners to intercede for me. It's that important. I, I, yeah, it's, it's too risky, you know, in a lot of ways. And, um, and so I, I think those are like two secret spiritual muscles, right? Recognizing that, that prayer is so essential and communicating it at the time that, um, at the spirit is at work. Um, I think there's, there's another kind of, you know, helpful tip as far as communication. And one question I often ask, you know, missionaries, it, it's hard to sort through, there's so much going on, right? So what should I communicate about? What should I ask for prayer about? And I think the formulation of the question that can be helpful to a lot of missionaries is what, what can I use prayer for in the next 24 hours, right? So like when you form, and this is something that I actually coach supporters on. I tell supporters, 
email your missionaries and ask them this question. What can I pray for you in the next 24 hours? Because that makes things specific and timely and more manageable, right? Like if you're trying to communicate everything about a ministry, that, that can be a lot, but thinking about what, what's, you know, what's the one thing that the spirit is teaching me right now. And sometimes it's not even about some ministry activity, right? It can be as simple as, wow, I read this Bible verse this morning and it really spoke to my heart and I'm trying to make sense of it. Please pray this Bible verse for me as I'm praying it for you. Something as short and simple and timely as like that is life-giving and makes a world of difference both to you and your prayer partners. As you were talking, Ian, one of the things I was thinking is how often as a missionary, I feel like I have to qualify my prayer requests through this great worthiness, you know, of like, you know, like, can I, can I pray that our car is broken or I have an important meeting tomorrow or I'm, I just don't want to go to work today. Like, you know, like, I, I, and, and I loved kind of just how you postured that. Like, it's, it's really what I need. I don't need, I mean, you got this great theme working through our podcast already of vulnerability. I mean, we're, we're not on the mission field because we're super spiritual or on the mission field because we're obedient. And anyway, just, I just was really encouraged, like to think, yeah, like it's, it's really okay. And it's important to the people who are asking, they, they want to know those things. Um, so yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, let's see, you know. Sometimes getting started is hard for people. Uh, what would you suggest? I mean, maybe it's been a long time since they've written an update. I mean, you kind of mentioned some things there, but any, any just kind of tips that you might give to somebody when it's it's been a while or they're a little overwhelmed? Yeah. So recently uh, I onboarded a worker who's been on the field for 10 years and who has never sent a newsletter. And um, and she sent her first you know, prayer request on Pray Vine. Very short thing. Uh, last week, and, and she was really excited, and her supporters were really excited. I, I think the first thing there is understanding, like, yeah, you might feel shame around not having communicated for a while. And, and often I'll see people, you know, write prayer requests like, I am sorry that I have not communicated in a very long time, right? And I would say there is no shame. Like, you are on the field trying to be faithful to the Lord, doing something really hard and people love you and you don't need to apologize. But what you do need to do is to communicate what's going on and how you need help. And that can be really short. And, and I think that's the other kind of key, like recognize there is no shame. There's no condemnation for, for those in Christ Jesus, right? And that applies to how we communicate with our supporters and start small. You know, like I, I think oftentimes people who haven't communicated in a while or feel like they're they're overdue, they feel like there there's a lot more that they have to say. And over time that like builds bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'd say supporters, they their attention span is also limited, right? And so if you one way to serve them is actually by giving them something small and manageable and graspable for them to to pray about and, and to hear about. Um, from you. And so um, I, I don't know if that's helpful or answers the question, but th th those are a couple of thoughts. On oh, I think it answers the question well, because it's, I mean, you address the spiritual problem, which is our perceived guilt and shame. And, um, and then you gave us a tangible action point is again, going back to what, what can I use right now? What can I, what can I involve them today? So I think those are good starting points and, and really deals with the peace. Um, yeah, I think it's great. And it's, it is, it's amazing how many things we get stifled on because we're in that guilt or shame territory, you know? And so that's a, that's a great word, Ian. Um, you know, just lastly, um, you know, do you have any like resources or tools or thoughts that, you know, you would love to suggest, um, you know, and, and I will all say to everybody, you guys should really check out right now. Like you, you don't, don't worry about saying that one. I, I use it. I love it. Our partners really love it too. I mean, they, they are all, I think they have several other partners who are missionaries themselves and they started using Prayvon because they like it so much. Um, but, but on, on the front, I mean, what do you think of when it comes to tools and resources that might help people? Right. Um, so a few things, 
come to mind uh, at Bravi. Let me back up and say the pro my product is not Pravine. My product is prayer. And whether <laughs> or not someone is using MailChimp or, you know, Facebook or WhatsApp or something yeah. like my goal and my calling is to help missionaries receive prayer. And so if you have specific questions, you can contact me um, about that. You can send a message to help at Pravine.org. All those come to me. Mm -hmm. um, but we at Prayvine publish uh, every month a newsletter all about mm -hmm. kind of healthy communication and best practices and engaging and connecting with your partners. Um, you can sign up for that newsletter either by trying mm -hmm. Prayvine or you can go to um, https uh, colon slash slash learn dot and you'll see a collection of um, of resources there. I, I think. Um, you know, some of the materials that, that Via Generosity puts out, like, I I wouldn't be doing this ministry had I never mm -hmm. read The God Ask. Someone mm -hmm. recommended it to me. And so um, I, I think, yeah, keep listening to to, to Via's, uh, you know, podcasts, uh, read their books. They, they, they have a lot of great information on that. And then I'd say... Um, Within organizations, we talk a lot about how to do fundraising, right? How, how do you create a ministry vision? How do you, um, you know, make an ask? How do you, uh, yeah, how do you do the nuts and bolts? How do you name, name storm, things like that? And I'd say there are a lot of resources around communications, even within your organization. And so ask, if there's a coworker of yours, you know, who seems to have really good rhythms um, in how they connect with their supporters, ask them to, to join their, you know, their prayer team, their newsletter, their pray vine, you know, prayer team or whatever, because, you know, it, it encourages them. You get to experience kind of, oh, this is what the experience is like from a supporter or prayer partner point of view. And so, um, yeah, I'd encourage you to start having these conversations even within your organizations, because, there, there's a lot to be gained and learned. Um, I, I don't have all the answers. Uh, and so I, I think to the extent that the community can talk about it, um, everyone can learn and grow together. Yeah, that's great stuff. Ian, thanks so much for being here. Any, um, as we kind of close out, is there anything on your heart, or, you know, just something that you kind of want to say, like if this is your, this is your uh, moment if you have something, um, but, but, but something you just would love to encourage the, the folks who will listen to this? Right. Um, so one image that I often kind of share with uh, both missionaries and their partners is our ministry partners and prayer partners, they're not up in the stands watching us run the race. They're on the field with us. And batons are being passed. We are, you know, kind of hand in hand on the same team, going in the same direction. And their involvement and participation in our work is incredibly important. And, and so like, if I can leave you with an image, it's that we're supporters and, um, and missionaries are on the field together. They're, they're not up in the stands. And then there's this, another way of looking at that, which is your supporters are running a race of faith themselves. And our participation in their lives giving them the opportunity to partner with us, sharing with them what God is doing, encouraging them, we're on their team. And so we're all running together in the same direction. Um, and yeah, if I can just leave one image with, with those listening to the podcast, that, that, that would be it. That's it's, it's delightful. I mean, and, um, again, I'm just struck by like this just, this isn't just um, a mental exercise. It's something that is truly the cry of your heart, a passion that you live for, that you spend a lot of time learning about and building. And, and it shows. It shows in how you speak about it. Um, shows in how much you care about the mission, the people, and the missionary. Anyway, I, I'm just we're really, we're really blessed to have you here today. And thanks for giving. Um, I I am. Sure, this is going to be really helpful to the people who listen to it. So yeah, thanks again for listening today to the Support Raising Podcast. And uh, you guys haven't had a chance, go ahead and check out 
uh, for Avon on the web. We will make sure that's in the show notes for you. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.